Uh, you are listening to the Garlic Fries and Baseball Guys podcast. Sam Lubman, Joe Shasky, like, rate, review, subscribe. Uh, brought to you by Odyssey Sports, too. I've been wanting to try and get that one in as well. I think that corporate would appreciate that if we gave a shout out to the to the big name there. So make sure you're uh, subscribed so that you don't miss any of this Giants content. So, Chasky, obviously rookies have been a big story for uh, this team this year. Uh, I had a chance to chat with Tyler Rogers after the game on uh, Saturday, and I asked him just kind of, you know, in your own words, talk about kind of the effect that the rookies have had on the team this year, and this is what he had to say. Oh, it's so much fun. A major league debut in itself is special, and then when you get first home runs, first RBIs, little first hits, things like that, they're, they're very special. And even when there's a lot of them happening like we got, we make sure to make sure each one's special and each day is memorable for each guy. Oh, it's so much fun. A major league debut in itself is special. And then when you started looping around there, uh, but basically, yeah, what Rogers talked about just, we have all these debuts when you're able to celebrate it, it does kind of add to that levity and that fun in the clubhouse. Cause you have something to be excited for. You saw the, the, the video that the, the giants posted on Saturday of Matos running into the clubhouse uh, after his Incredible. first home run and the celebration they're going to have there. And he talked about how he got the, the coldest shower of his life. Uh, afterwards in celebration. It was stuff like that makes it so much fun. So it's obvious the rookies are having an incredibly positive impact on the team this year. So I want to go by, you know, rat tat Agreed. some of these rookies and let's just give them some grades, you know, so far this season, just kind of where they're at. So I want to start with Casey Schmidt, who, you know, we, you and I both have been very excited about Schmidt ever since he got called up. We were excited about him before the season, had a great start, kind of sagging off a little bit so far. Uh, we haven't seen him in the lineup as much lately. I asked Gabe Kapler about that as well. Uh, we can get to that sound in a second. But Shasky, right now, you're grading Casey Schmidt. What would you give him so far on this season? I mean, he started off in A+, plus and it's struggled a lot lately. I I'm going to go B+, plus because he is up, making an impact. Defensively, he's been outstanding. He's batting higher than Brandon Crawford right now in terms of batting average. It's higher than the league average at all three positions, shortstop, second base, and third base. Yeah, it's been a bad couple of weeks for him, but I, I think all in all, he's way farther along than any of us had hoped. And he's the one that we had the most optimism with early on. He settled down a, li a little bit, but there will be opportunities for him. I'm going to give him a B plus. I'm dead serious yeah. on that. I would think I would give him a B minus. Uh, again, just because I do think the slumping is kind of, it's been unfortunate. The, the, the lack of plate discipline at first was kind of concerning, but he's kind of building that up now. Uh, the reason I didn't want to go into the C category, Shasky, is I stumbled across this stat while uh, sifting through things on fan graphs last night. Since May 1st, again, May 1st, what a magical day for Giants fans. Uh, Casey Schmidt, with runners in scoring position, is hitting 421. That's sixth best in baseball in that time. Wow. Like the wow. man is coming through when you need him the most. Now you would like to see him in the lineup a little bit more lately, but I asked Gabe Kapler about that before the game on Sunday. And this is what he had to say about that. So there's a couple of factors. Number one, we have a third baseman who is all-star caliber. Number one, most important factor. Casey's also a third baseman. We've got Brandon Crawford playing better baseball and leading our team in, in a lot of ways. I want to keep giving him that opportunity. Second baseman, also all-star caliber. So the number one reason why Casey's not playing regularly right now is because we have three other players in those positions performing well. Second, playing time has always been, will always be earned. Really good performance leads to taking a step back. I've never been around a manager that doesn't want to keep pushing players who are performing well into the lineup. So... Casey will not come out of the lineup when he's performing really well. And when he's struggling a little bit, it's going to give other players opportunity. It's a beautiful thing about competition at the highest level here in the major leagues. I think that's pretty fair. Don't you? Oh, absolutely. And it, it, it does kind of shows that it's not all just Casey. I mean, yeah, you got three guys right now, that infield who are absolutely killing it. it it's hard to not play JD Davis. It's hard to not play Tyro yeah. Estrada and yeah, Brandon Crawford. He's that clubhouse leader and he has absolutely been living up to that billing for the last few months. So the last month or so, so I'm not super worried about Casey, but yeah, B plus B minus. That's where I think I put him there. Uh, this, this feels like a, a very easy one here. Patrick Bailey. It's been an a minus. Yeah. I mean, I could even say A, but I'm going to go A minus just to leave out some wiggle room for like MVP candidate uh, for a rookie. I mean, this is what you look for when you draft somebody in the first round at the top, the top of the 
the draft. You know, I mean, this is a guy who is really giving you what I thought Bart would give you, you know, mm -hmm. which kind of sucks. Um, the bat is way better than I anticipated. The glove's been excellent. He solidified this rotation in terms of the, a good presence defensively behind the dish, throwing guys out. I mean, you throw out Tatis, Mookie Betts. I mean, these are superstars. These aren't just good players, superstars. Um, yeah. And the clutch factor has been there. I mean, this is a guy, to me, he's an 1980s throwback. You probably were way too young to watch someone like uh, a Gary Carter. But I get shades of someone like that. Like, this is an all-around player. Praise. Huh? That's high praise too to, for a, a Gary Carter comparison. So, I mean, yeah. Gary Carter's the high end. I mean, this is a yeah. poor man's version. We're we're a month into a guy's career. This doesn't mean he's going to be a three forty hitter for the <laughs> remainder of his life. But uh, but he can do a little bit of everything, right? And that's why I loved Gary Carter because early on he could do a little bit of everything, and eventually he became more of a slugger as he aged. But uh, this kid looks special. I mean, yeah. I, I think to me, I, I think he's a rookie of the year candidate thus far. Absolutely. I agree with you too. And if, again, if it weren't for Corbin Carroll and Ellie De La Cruz, I think he'd be the hands down favorite. I mean, he's, you say Gary Carter, I'm going to throw a Buster Posey in there. He has hit the ground running with this pitching cool. staff in a way that Buster Posey did when he yeah. first came up as a rookie. Uh, I remember we were talking to, to Bailey after the game on Friday night. And I asked him afterwards, you know, Logan Webb's really been feeling that change up lately. And basically it was just kind of him and Logan kind of realizing, Hey, that's one of your best pitches. Let's throw that a little bit more. It's that, that awareness too, but it's also, the way he's developed at the big league level, no yeah. one really thought much about him hitting from, it was, I think the right side. And yet he's been killing it from the right side. Yes. You know, he's, he's putting up numbers from the right side that he never put up in the minor league. So the way he's adapted to the big league game so quickly in contrast to like Casey Schmidt, who it's kind of been more of a grind. Like that really makes me very excited for what Bailey can do going forward. And yeah, I, that's it. That's the other kind of posy comparable where, Again, I'm not comparing performance. I'm comparing the feeling that you get watching him is very similar. The, the spark that he has given this team, it's very similar. The The way he handles this very veteran-laden pitching staff, it's very similar to what Buster Posey did when he first and, broke onto the scene. And, and, and Sam, I want to stop you. The reason why I say Gary Carter is because I think we've kind of like there. Johnny Bench is the number one greatest catcher of all time, right? Mm -hmm. Buster Posey's the greatest uh, San Francisco Giant. So I don't want to use a San Francisco Giant, but like Gary Carter was like an eleven-time All Star, multiple Gold Gloves, Silver Slugger. Uh, was was literally the excellence at the position in the mid to late '80s and early '90s. And he's kind of the guy that gets forgotten because Yvonne Rodriguez and Mike Piazza types come in after him, and Johnny Bench obviously set the tone before him yogi Berra, the era before johnny bench and so i don't know like i get a lot of gary carter kind of vibes from this guy you know i just i really do i think he's an all-around stud gary was a power hitter though in an era where there weren't a lot of power hitters from behind the plate but you look at bailey's numbers and they're plus plus across the board for his position yeah uh moving on now uh from one catcher to another or sort of catcher blake sable now Let's try and uh, remove recency bias here after the. He's the been issue. solid. He's he been, has. Uh, to me, he's been a C plus, B minus. He's I been think solid. Yeah, I, like, I like C plus too. I, it, it's just not working at catcher. I no. do feel like that when he's behind the plate, the, the starters, there seems to be something missing a little bit. It just it doesn't seem as crisp for when uh, Bailey's behind the plate. In left field, I think he's been capable. Yeah, he's uh, this fine. Is team, this is a team that clutch. wants to. This is a team that once rode Travis Ishikawa's defense in left yes. field to a championship. So it's it's not oh. end all be all, but like I don't find myself like you know hands on my heads. Oh no, Blake Sable in left field. Like I don't find myself doing that. I'm not looking at him being like, oh, there's our next Gold Glove left fielder either. I feel like over eventually he's gonna have to be a DH type. Uh, right now until they find a more consistent position for him. Maybe he could be a first baseman because anybody can, I guess, be a first baseman these days. But yeah, I think C plus is probably a, a good one for Blake Sable there. Uh, moving on, Ryan Walker. This is the guy who, very quiet guy. I don't know how much people really know about him. I've been very high on him ever since he got to this to the team and not just because he's very easy to talk to in the clubhouse. Shasky, what grade would you give for Ryan Walker right now? Man, Ryan Walker's been excellent. Yeah. Um, Ryan Walker has been excellent. B B minus. I mean, he's been random. He's been good in, in the bullpen. He's been good as an opener. I really like him. Yeah, I would. I think I might kind of give him a B plus a minus just because he's been incredibly solid. The, the, 
for me, what excites me the most about him is just he's so deceptive. He's so hard to hit against. The the delivery, the the way he throws the ball, the way he's kind of slings it around his body. It's just I would hate to have to hit against that. No, like, yes. Not just how he stands on the mound, just everything about him is weird. And you know I he reminds love me of? it. He reminds me of your older cousin trying to strike you out and strike outs against the garage door. You know what I mean? Like just <laughs> messing all sorts with of you. junk ball stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Just totally messing with you and screwing with you. And you don't know whether he's going to hit you in the ribs or throw it right down the pipe. Yeah. No, it cuts a couple numbers on, on Walker. He's got a 189 yeah. ERA so far. He's stranded 86% of base runners though. I mean, yeah. that's what you want out of a reliever. He has been slotted into that opener role. He seems it's kind of growing on him a little bit. We'll see just kind of how that goes. Yeah. Kapler said that the plan is Ryan Walker for the time being. And, uh, you know, he hasn't, he's had kind of one rough start, one outing already, but that's going to happen. But I am very impressed what you're seeing from Ryan Walker. And for a team that's very bullpen centric right now, having a guy like him has been very huge. And then uh, Shasky must save probably the most exciting one for last Brett wisely. No, I'm just kidding. Luis Matos. I want, again, it's only been a couple weeks so far. Uh, I don't know. Maybe I don't want to say incomplete because that seems no fun. But yeah, grade Luis Matos's uh, first couple weeks in baseball. He's been an A. I mean, we're talking <laughs> about our first outfield prospect at 21 years old, second youngest everyday player in the game right now. Uh, how could anyone say it's other than an A right now? Yeah. He looks the part. Yes, the bat will come around, but the plate discipline's amazing. Defensively, he's an A plus plus guy. Arm, range, speed, glove, you name it. Speed on the base pass. Dude, he's been awesome. And one, thing I, and one thing I really like that we saw him on uh, Saturday, he gets picked off early in the game. Yes. When you're a rookie, you get picked off. You have that long walk back to the dugout. It's so easy to beat yourself up yep. over it and be like, oh, man, I screwed that one up. Comes back in his, in his next step bat and, you know, hits his first career home run. You know, to be able to bounce back like that. And yes. again, that was another word where Kapler kind of praised him for that one. 21 years old and to be able to kind of shake things off that quickly that's a great sign of maturity i am yep. very excited to see what matos does uh i don't think he's going to be like a 40 home run guy but no. if he could be like a 25 home run three home 300 hitter yeah sign me the heck up for that so yeah this is just this is such an incredibly fun crop of young guys and what's even crazier shasky is there's so many more coming yeah. And so just an incredibly fun time to be a Giants fan right now, seeing these young guys come up and seeing how they're all performing at such a great level. So before we get out of here, Shasky, uh, we are recording this on Monday, June 26th. Uh, a lot of you guys will probably be listening to this podcast on Tuesday, the 27th, when the Giants are north of the border, taking on the Toronto Blue Jays. And uh, we're uh, getting a, a Kevin Gosman reunion. And I don't know if there's any other notable reunions to talk about this week. <laughs> But uh, I always enjoy I refuse to say his name. <laughs> oh, what, Kevin Gosman? Come on, man. <laughs> anyway, um, that will do it for us here on the uh, episode you, 63 of the I Garlic Fries and Baseball Guys podcast. Barry Bonds' 63rd home run was at Coors Field in 2001. Uh, be sure to catch us on the next episode when, uh, oh, man, who knows what could happen in this series. Maybe uh, Brandon uh, Bell hits a home run this week. I am, you know what, since you said the name, I'm saying it. If Brandon Belt hits a walk-off home run against the Giants this week, I am going to be so incredibly happy about it. Oh, I want all the, up. I want the Belt haters to just take shut that one and wear it. So, Sam Lemon, Joe Shasky, Giants taking on the fighting Brandon Belts this week. We will catch you on the next one.